Let's continue. In the previous video we spoke about anticoagulant properties in normal state. Now we will talk about injured state and coagulative processes. So the first step will be a vasoconstriction. This will be induced by neurogenic activity induced by nerves, myogenic activity induced by the smooth muscles of the vessel, and also by endothelin, a substance that is a potent vasoconstrictor produced by endothelial cells. So what happens? As there is an injury, the injury is visualized here, there will be an exposure of basement membrane below the endothelial cells and also the collagen that is formed here. This is very attractive to the platelets. So platelets will now come and adhere to this site. Prior to this, there will be a release, there will be a release of vesicles found in endothelial cells called Weibull plate bodies, as you remember from the inflammation videos that also contain selectines. These will now cover the injured area, as you see here, the red spots are the von Willebrand factor. This will bind to the first layer of platelets in a process called adhesion. The binding site of platelets is called GP1B, standing for glycoprotein 1B. The importance of this is in pathological processes. After this, the platelet gets activated and releases its granules. The granules, as you remember, are alpha and delta, and there will also be an induction of its phospholipid membrane. The alpha granules contains platelet-derived growth factor, which by the name will induce growing of the fibroblasts, so meaning that the fibroblasts will now secrete more extracellular matrix containing a lot of collagen in a regenerating process below the endothelial damaged area. Fibrino uh, fibrinogen will help to aggregate the platelets and also strengthening the platelet plug. Dense granules contain ADP, serotonin, histamine, calcium. ADP is important as it will work as a glue to help the platelets to stick more to each other. Calcium will play a role in intrinsic-extrinsic pathways, which we will cover in another video. And we also mentioned that the phospholipid membrane of the platelets gets activated. Once it's activated, it will form arachidonic acid. The arachidonic acid has many derivatives, but the one we're interested in now is thromboxane A2, abbreviated TXA2. This one was working the opposite as the prostacycline. Thromboxane A2 is therefore a vasoconstrictor and a platelet aggregator. So you will do the opposite of prostacycline. This will, uh, thromboxane A2 is induced by an enzyme called cyclooxygenase. The importance of knowing about this enzyme is that the drug aspirin works on this enzyme and inhibits it. Spe specifically, the acetyl salicylic acid inhibits the COX enzyme. And therefore, aspirin has anticoagulant properties. After the secretion process, you will have the aggregation process. In aggregation, platelets will now come and bind to each other and lie down on the platelet plug, as you see here. It will be the second layer and onwards, in other words. These will bind to each other through other receptors called GP2B3A and the connecting point between them will be induced by fibrinogen. And after the three processes of, adhe of adhesion, secretion and aggregation, you will form your primary hemostatic plug. But there is a problem. The primary hemostatic plug is not stable. It's very weak. That's why you need something to strengthen it. And this will be by fibrin polymers. But first you have to make the monomers. This will be covered in the next video, how it's formed. But essentially the fibrin strands, as you see here, visualized as blue. These will strengthen the platelet plugs. Besides platelets and fibrins, you will also find white blood cells and red blood cells in this meshwork. In the following video, we will talk about the clotting cascades and the calicrinin system. Thank you.